Let me guess, you're reading this because you have fallen victim to some online Ponzi scheme or cryptocurrency scheme, and you're wondering what it's all about and if this is a very common scenario. This has been going on now for a few years, and this article um, reflects that. Uh, there was a major crypto scammer that was recently prosecuted, um, and the case dragged on for many years. Some of this went back uh, even into 2016, 2015. Um, there was fraud in other areas back to 2011, but the crypto uh, Bitcoin scam, digital currency, started up a couple years ago. First started out with metal securities. A lot of these scams used to be commodities brokers or bond brokers, and they tied payouts the price of gold and a lot of different things and this is one of the most common scenarios money that victims handed over wasn't invested at all this is the same thing that happens with your cryptocurrency scams the um, fraudsters claim that they're putting money into digital currency but they never do they claim to have some type of algorithm or special investment scheme that's going to make you money but they just put the money into their personal bank accounts um, and take the money and use it for their own purposes, right? Like purchasing expensive homes and resorts. To keep the schemes running, they rebrand and would show victims account statements. If you've been a victim of a scam, Bitcoin or otherwise, you're gonna get account statements from the company. They're gonna show you that your investment went up and every month it's gonna go higher and you're gonna show them that their funds are secure with those statements. They just make up these statements using off the shelf invoicing programs or Photoshop or something that um, makes it look like they're really making you profit on your investment. The problem comes if you ever wanna take your money out. If you wanna do a redemption or cash in your profits and then they're gonna come up with excuses for delays. A lot of times the excuses are the accountant's on vacation, uh, they're moving their offices, there's death in the family, they make up anything. And sometimes, in addition to excuses, they're going to come up with ways to try to get more money from you by telling you that in order to get the money out, you have to put more money in for taxes, for um, audit fees, for some type of um, um, government duties. The other type of scam comes when they'll have you add more money to make more money. So let's say if you put in originally $2,000 and your account goes up to $15,000 and you wanna cash out your 15,000, what they'll tell you is look, at 20,000 your account qualifies for some magic bonus. So if you get it up to 20,000, it'll be worth 30. So if you put in another five, then you'll get back 30,000. Well, some people fall for that and the other five is just a way to get more money from them. Sometimes they claim that their, their company's been shut down by a government agency like the SEC, um, but it's all just a scam. This person got a 180 month prison term, 15 years. Um, this Ponzi scheme, cryptocurrency Ponzi scheme was one of the largest to be sentenced to date. It's not the largest we've seen. We've seen online scams that have been much, much bigger than this. So the takeaway from it is, if you're gonna send somebody money for anything, it doesn't matter what they call it, Ponzi scheme, metals, commodities, bonds, real estate, make sure that you know where your money's actually going. Don't take it at the word of the person you're sending money to. Don't take it even at the word of the statements you get from them, the account statements, the printed account statements. Those can just be made up on a PDF file. Make sure that you verify where your money is and it has your name on it. In fact, why bother doing that at all? Why not just, if you want to buy Bitcoin, buy it through your bank. Buy Bitcoin directly. Don't go through some company that claims to have some algorithm that's going to magically magnify the profits. If you do, you might be one of $16 million that goes away. This person was ordered to pay back the victim $16 million. This person doesn't have $16 million. This fraudster will never be able to pay all that money back. The, um, the victims will lose a great portion of that money, more than likely. We have other, some other videos about how to collect on lost investment scams and how to recover that money. That's a subject for, from another, uh, another subject, another video. But 
he had this scheme running for a decade. How do you keep a scheme running for a decade? You come up with new narratives. You come up with new uh, sales pitches to tell your investors. If you are in a scam or an investment that you're suspicious is a scam, here's how you find out. Ask for a redemption. Maybe not the whole thing. Ask for some of your money back. See how that goes. If they're very quick to give you your money back, well, then maybe it might be okay. We still recommend being cautious. In the U.S., every investment vehicle is supposed to be registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. If they're not registered with the Exter Securities and Exchange Commission, it's very likely that is a scam. If there's guaranteed results promised, that's a red flag of a scam. And we've talked about that in other videos. Um, nobody can offer guaranteed results. Um, even um, <clears throat> the, the highest skilled Wall Street traders can't guarantee results because you don't know what the market's going to do. Be very wary. This is a good example of a Bitcoin scam that got out of hand. There's many other ones that are more than $16 million. We've seen some in the you know, high uh, seven figures, 80, 90 million. There's probably a couple that have broken 100 million at this point. So avoid them at all costs. If you're in one, try to get your money out. If you got scammed, then you have to look at asset recovery and how do you get a refund from your fraud when you've sent a person actual money that you can't get back.